Hi, this is Egon Trujillo, and this is my video assignment, Community Map. So this is a drawing I did, a community map drawing I did of Cypress Park, and you'll notice a couple of landmarks here. Uh, the thick red lines represent the three major freeways that surround our school. The large green line is our beautiful LA River to the southwest of our school. You'll also notice in yellow I color-coded the three parks in the area. Uh, Mount Washington there to the north, and you'll see a couple of uh, other aspects of the city like the fast food restaurants, there's uh, bars, there's liquor stores, uh, grocery store, library, churches around there. So what I wanted to do first is just tell you a little bit about Cypress Park from my research. So according to the Los Angeles Times local newspaper website, the neighborhood of Cypress Park's uh, median household income is about $42,615, putting the city at the poverty line. Um, according to another website, Zillow, the average home costs about $694,200, which is quite high for that neighborhood. And unfortunately, a lot of my students are uh, feeling the effects of gentrification, and many of them uh, can't afford homes, and a lot of our families rent apartments. According to Statistical Atlas website, the percentage of people living in Cypress Park with a high school diploma is only about 35% of the total population, and those without a high school diploma, about 48%, which places Cypress Park as the sixth out of 120. Uh, neighborhoods in Los Angeles of total individuals without high school diplomas, which is very high, very alarming. So when I first came to Cypress Park around 10 years ago, I was a little intimidated, to be honest, uh, working in the city. And what I wanted to show you first is a couple of uh, photos I took of the neighborhood. So graffiti, a lot of graffiti around the neighborhood when I first noticed. Um, this one here says our ghetto kingdom. Um, and the reason for that is because the city has a long turbulent history with gang violence. Um, so after reading Gorsky's article, The Myth of Culture of Poverty, and educating myself about class and poverty of Cypress Park, as he insists educators do uh, in order to meet the standards uh, of our students, meet the needs of our students, I should say. I, I now realize, though, that there's no such thing as a culture of poverty, as Oscar Lewis suggested back in the 1950s. Uh, of course, initially, I was quite intimidated by all that graffiti and knowing the history of Northeast Los Angeles and the birthplace of the Avenue's gangs took place here in Cypress Park, uh, a spinoff of the Mexican Mafia, and, um, and in surrounding cities, they're still pretty rampant. Uh, many of the streets still have a lot of graffiti uh, with the avenues trademark uh, around schools even, liquor stores, the symbols are everywhere. Uh, the neighborhood has suffered and remained in poverty, not just because of the gang violence though, uh, social, political, economic, class, racial factors abroad. Um, and at, for, at first this signaled to me that these students that I'd be working with probably would demonstrate some sort of trauma. Uh, due to their family's violent history, uh, and because of the fact that the counselors told me that this was a Title I school, uh, most of our students qualify for a reduced meal plan. So at first, I you know thought maybe it would be kind of challenging working with some of these students, combination of gang violence and low income. And during my first year, I saw a lot of gang fights, a lot of graffiti in and around our school, uh, rival gangs, uh, you know, picking on our students, things like that. and But honestly, to my surprise, these what most would call at-risk students didn't act or react any differently uh, than students I'd worked with at previous schools. I just gave these students all the basic human rights um, that they deserve. Uh, I never you know, once uh, thought of deficit theory like Gorski uh, recommends we avoid um, because I gave them, like I said, the same opportunities. I never thought they were deficient in, in anything. Um, these low-income students with their with their gang history that I've worked with for over 10 years now, I've been on several field trips with them. I've graduated several of them. I've worked with many families one-on-one. -on -one. We've done lots of community events together. 
And, you know, after reading the article, uh, Teaching Tolerance, which reminds us about how teacher disposition can have a negative effect on a student's life and make them kind of give up on themselves, um, which is why I, I don't have low expectations for my students, nor do I even worry uh, about what they can achieve. Um, I have a lot of English learners, SPED students, um, low-income students at, at the school. In fact, most of our students are um, all three of these, and I have a lot of these that I work with. So after completing my reality tour of the, of the city and talking to a lot of students, um, my perspective is, has changed greatly, actually. Um, I asked students, well, what are you proud of in your neighborhood? What, what, where do you go? What do you do for fun? And so I have some more pictures I want to show you of uh, what, they, what they told me. So this is the LA River Garden. It's a local community center where uh, 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 Tierra de Mujeres is the name of the community group that hosts a lot of events for family members about awareness, uh, not just uh, political, but also about environmental issues. Um, so they have a, a recreational center there as well. Um, this is the neighboring Rio de los Angeles State Park where a, there's a skate park there actually and a lot of uh, students go there to hang out. Um, our softball team actually holds practice there and it's along the beautiful uh, Los Angeles River which um, although it is concreted over it is beautiful. It runs from the San Gabriel Mountains all the way to the coast, and um, now they're trying to revitalize it, so people go kayaking there, they go fishing there, and here is the Cypress Park Library right right down the street. It's pretty new um, by our school. So from from doing this reality tour, like Rogalski suggested that that we do in order to better understand the causes of poverty and. Um, I, I do now. I, I understand the, the history of, of the city and what a lot of our students face. But honestly, I think the community, it's evolved a lot since the gangs ruled back in the 1940s because many, if not all of the students attending Sotomayor Center for Arts and Sciences, they're local residents. And the, the stereotypes of low income that we don't see that at our school. We don't see that in our classroom. In fact, all these students are neighbors. We don't bust any students in. So they all know each other. They all um, see each other every day. So um, we don't really have any issues with, with, with poverty or anyone picking on each other because of poverty. Um, and honestly, I think Cypress Park has, has a really, really bright future. And I'm glad I did this assignment. And here are the sources I use to reference my assignment. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.